All right, I'm talking now with Elizabeth Hess. She's author of the book, Nim Chimsky, who would, the chimp who would be human. Elizabeth, can you tell me a little bit about the book and why you're here this weekend? I'm here because Carrie got me here. Um, because of her extraordinary charm and her persuasiveness and I was very eager to meet her monkeys and I'm here of course because Project NIM is showing and um, this whole experience of writing this book and spending five years doing it and then watching the people in this book walk out of the book and appear in the movies has just been phenomenal so I'm, I'm very happy about it. When did you write the book and can you tell me about the process? The book um, came out in 2008 and I spent about five years writing it. It started, I wanted to write a biography of an individual animal and I was trying to choose a species and I was looking at elephants and parrots and then as it turned out I, I met Stephanie Lafarge and she started to talk to me about Nim and nobody knew Nim's story and it was a fascinating epic kind of story and um, Nim had such a huge impact on every human being that he met and there was a lot to write about. There was the science experiment, there was his biography which no one knew, there was the sanctuary movement. Um, as a writer it was a huge challenge and had I known what it was going to be like I might not have done it, <laughs> but I'm very glad I did. <laughs> And you've known Bob Ingersoll, who features in the book, I Take It, and the movie. And you've known him for about yes. how long? I met him, um, well, I, be I began by researching the New York phase of Nim's life. And I was looking for Bob because people told me, you know, Norman. I, I had a list of all the students who had been in Norman, who had been at um, IPS, the Institute for Primate Studies, and I knew that Bob was a passionate act advocate for chimpanzees. And his name had come up, and he was not in the phone book. He wasn't answering emails. I finally sat down and wrote him a long, heartfelt letter, which he promptly put under a stack of mail on his desk, and he didn't read it for months and months and months. And then one day it surfaced, and. At that point, um, the institute where Nim had been born was about to be bulldozed. And I said, I'm flying out there, I just want to see it. And I went out there and I, and I met Bob, and we spent a week together. And, you know, there was nobody who felt about Nim the way Bob did. And it changed the course of the book, and we became very close friends. And um, as you will soon see in the movie, he's a very passionate guy. Can, can you tell me how uh, writing the book might have changed your life, your relationship with animals? Well, I knew very little about chimpanzees, and um, I had a lot to learn very quickly. And um, I needed to spend time with them, I needed to talk to a number of experts. Um, and I think people don't really realize that animals are individuals. They're he's and she's rather than it's, and that they have lives that have beginnings and middles and ends. and um, for me, spending five years researching the life of an animal was quite a project. And um, you know, how do you how do you tell the truth? You know, one person tells you Nim did this, another person tells you Nim did that, and where's the truth? There's there's very little evidence, and there are very few files. And so, as a journalist, I had to kind of think through how I was going to tell this story and without anthropomorphizing and and I wanted to search for the truth so it took a long time but I feel that it's a very fair treatment of, of his life story and how involved were you in the process of the film being made I was a consultant and you know which is basically a, 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 a you know a researcher I turned over my research to James Marsh and Simon Chin so you know, there was a lot of discussion about who they were going to interview and who they were and and that kind of thing. I wasn't involved in the making of the film or um, I take no responsibility. <laughs> How, do you feel like do you feel like the film does a good job of representing what you wanted to present in the book? I, I think the film is fabulous and I think books and films are different and I've learned about the power of movies um, in this process and you know, I think that the Ultimately, I mean, what I love about Project NIM is that Marsh is fearless and that he didn't, there's not one cute moment in this movie, really. He, 
you know, he he understood the gravity of this situation, and I it, and you know, I think he treated people very respectfully. So I'm happy about that. I think ultimately his story and my story in the book are the same. Books have more facts. Um, you know, the Marsh doesn't didn't deal with the last ten years of Nim's life. You know, I don't think people wanted to see an eight-hour film about Nim. <laughs> but it, the movie is so powerful and so beautifully made. I'm, I'm really thrilled with it. That's excellent. I really appreciate your time today. Thanks for talking with me. Okay, my pleasure. Thank you.